Hey everyone, this month we are so excited because we have a special guest that's joining us for the month of March. We are going to be focusing on healthy food habits and we've entitled this month Sensible Food Habits with Susan. This is Susan Roach. I know me and Brooke introduced her earlier, but um, we're so excited to have you, Susan. Um, so what are you going to be teaching us throughout this month? Well, my goal this month is to teach you guys how to take some classic recipes and lighten them up. Nice. Um, using more vegetables, less fats, less saturated fats, and just getting more vegetables into your diet and a little less protein. Well, we could I uh, not. Nice. No, I mean, protein <laughs> is protein is great, but um, just not so much. It's, it's, it's good to have a better balance of vegetables. Right. I know I don't eats. always eat the amount yeah. of vegetables I should be eating. So I'm so, excited about this. Thanks. So today we are going to make a uh, spaghetti squash, roasted vegetable, kind of lasagna type meal mm -hmm. with um, a multitude of vegetables and then a light dairy layer and some cheese on top. And I'm just going to... Yeah. That's what we're doing. Well, let's do it. I'm excited. <laughs> so to start, we have back here some ground turkey, and we brown this up, and we're going to add some low sugar organic marinara. You can use your own. You can make your own if you like, but we're going to use this. Where did you get that? This came from Aldi, but if you're in the regular grocery store, mm -hmm. um, make sure when you're looking at the ingredients on the jar to, to focus on as little added sugar mm -hmm. as possible, then same thing with the sodium. Yeah. Um, so, and you don't want a whole bunch of ingredients that, don't, that you can't pronounce. Right. Always, if I'm using a jar like this, I'll put a little bit of water in it just to get, make sure we get the goodness out of it. Yeah. I'm very excited about this. Are we going to show them the finished product yet? Or are we going to wait for it? <laughs> 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 it looks really good, guys. She made one ahead of time. We'll just let this simmer while we put the roasted vegetables in the oven. And once they're ready, this will be ready. Okay. And then we'll start layering the dish. So for the vegetables, I've cut up bell pepper, onions, mushrooms, zucchini, cauliflower, and broccoli. I'm going to tuck my sleeves in. My husband calls this my pirate shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he would not approve. So, so we want to spread these out. So you don't grease the pan. I don't. I use nonstick foil just it makes cleanup easier. Um, yeah. It's important when you're roasting vegetables to try to get them in a single layer mm -hmm. so that they truly can roast. Those look good. And it's also to try to get them into... Um, bite sized pieces so you don't have to use a knife and you know a fork right a knife you know, of course use a fork. and then we are going to drizzle this with olive oil sometimes I put these in a plastic bag and shake them oh, yeah you can try not to mess up your kitchen today ah, Megan. you should have messed it up <laughs> here freshly ground pepper that's really important. Yeah. I, just, I feel like I'm at a restaurant. And if you can and you have it, some sea salt is really good, better than I do my salt. You don't have to grind your salt, you can get sea salt in a container that's already ground fine. Just yeah. put it in your hand, sprinkle it over. So we're going to pop these into a 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes. While those are roasting in the marinara simmering, we are going to combine our cheese. We have um, skim ricotta. Also get this at Aldi, but any grocery store has either whole milk ricotta or skim ricotta. But we're going to use the skim to lighten it up. And we're using one carton of that and then about a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. You don't measure things, huh? I don't. <laughs> I'm a cook. <laughs> In the recipe, you will have measurements. Yeah. <laughs> She's a true chef. I'm a cook. I yeah. am not a baker. Yeah. Um, 
because baking requires yeah. requires some hands yeah, <laughs> and measuring. That's what I'm used to. So I'm like, where's the measuring cup? <laughs> the first cake I ever made. I called my mom at work. Mom's like, what's wrong with this cake? <laughs> Susan, read me the ingredients. I wrote them down. And I went, uh oh. She said, what? I said, I forgot the flour. Oh no. <laughs> so yeah. baking is not good. Anyway, this is all mixed up. Yeah. Um, and this is going to go in the layer. And the next thing we're going to do, and I probably should have started with this. I was wondering what the noodles were going to be. The noodles are going to be spaghetti squash. So uh -huh. it comes like this. And you want to cut it long ways like this and clean it out. And I found that my grandmother's ice cream scoop works the best. So as soon as you cut it open, you clean it out. Clean it out. Some people cook the whole squash, then cut it open and clean it out. Mm -hmm. You can do it in the Instapot. You can do it in the oven. I like to do it in the microwave mm -hmm. because it's fast. And um, I've noticed when I clean them after they cook, it's not as easy to get out like that. It's was. It, you know why? I think it's because the spaghetti is sticking to the yeah, seeds. Yeah, because it would take yeah. it would take like, a lot of my noodles out. Yeah. So it. this is what it looks like. And then we just put it on a plate, cover it tightly with plastic wrap, and we pop it in the microwave for seven minutes. I usually try to buy squash that's this size mm -hmm. because it makes it's perfect for like a 9 by 11 or 9 by 13. And the big ones are really hard to handle to cut. It's like cutting a pumpkin. So just one of those. Is all that's what we're going to be using today? We're going to be just using one whole one. squash. Okay. So we've already microwaved this half, and I'll show you. And it's cooled enough. You be really careful when you take it out of the microwave because the steam. But you just take a fork. That's so awesome. And just pull it away. <laughs> Natural spaghetti. Natural spaghetti, and. We use it for Italian dishes, but we also use it for Asian dishes, like pad thai. Um, and you can take it out, and if you're really careful, you can take it out, mix it up, and then be real pretty and put it back in the shell, oh. like a stuffed potato. Yeah. So. Maybe one of these days I'll be fancy. Uh, it's just good ingredients. You know, I think clean, healthy, natural. Is yeah, kind of the best way to go. Definitely. Um, and do you want to show them what that looks like? That's so cool. It looks just, just like spaghetti. spaghetti. Wow. And it just almost turns out perfect every time for this size. I guess that's probably about a two pound small foot wall size. Yeah. And uh, so I can go ahead and start and show you how we're going to layer this up. Okay. I don't know the veggies aren't quite done yet. So you start with the meat. You start with the meat. Now just put a really thin layer on the bottom. And then I don't know if I need to cover the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But just kind of give something for the uh, a little moisture on the bottom. A little moisture on the bottom. Not too much though. Yeah. Because you don't want it watery. Right. And then we take the spaghetti squash next. And we'll just do half of this and you can see. It's so beautiful too. I know. Just and you know what's really great with just some olive oil and salt and pepper and some Parmesan cheese, just as a little really? healthy. And if you have too much, I put it in a ziploc bag and pop it in the freezer and then just pull it back out with that leftover. Nice, because I know I bought frozen spaghetti squash mm -hmm. before. So I guess you could just go ahead and do your own. You can. You certainly can. It's so much easier. And then when I do the cheese. Kind of, my mom always did it in dollops for like yeah. the onion, so I kind of dollop it. I specifically remember mom doing dollops. Yeah, of the, yeah. And, of cheese. and it spreads out. So when yeah, when it bakes, it spreads out, so you still get cheese in every bite. Yep. So do you have any healthy alternatives for the bread that we usually eat with lasagna? <laughs> There are some keto recipes, but is there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I usually like a good bread to go with it. I, I did bring a big loaf of um, crusty bread today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll, that's 
really good with it. Yeah. 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 Really good. yeah. Some less calories. Nice. Um, you did think ahead for that. Yeah, yeah. Was a little bit. You are on top of it. So. Cool. So now we you're now waiting we for the vegetables to come out. Okay. And so then, where do they go? They go right on top of the cheese. Mm -hmm. And then we finish with the marinara. And then we cover it with mozzarella cheddar cheese on top. Okay. And um, then once it comes out of the oven, it needs to sit for 10 minutes before you cut it open. So just let it sit just for a little while? Just let it sit rest. It can rest for an hour if you want to, but definitely don't cut right into it right when it comes out. Yeah. So what is our finished product going to look like? Our finished product is going to look like this. And this makes a lot. Oh, yum. I am so excited it's to eat that. It's and trout. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it is. So this That's also a lot of vegetables freezes right there. well. And um, reheats well in the microwave. That looks so and if you want to reheat it in the oven, you can just put full back over it and reheat it that way. Yeah. You can probably even reheat it in the air fryer a piece at a time. Yum. Get I am really excited about trying this. I've never had like that type of vegetables in lasagna, so I'm excited to try something new. Would you like to have one? Sure. Gonna cut some? Sure. <laughs> we'll see what the middle looks like, guys. Do you have a knife? Do you want me to grab one? You can grab one. Okay. Let's see. I hope I don't cut the tin pan. And the cool thing about this recipe is if you don't like broccoli and cauliflower or peppers and onions, if you want to go with asparagus or eggplant or you can, can switch it you up. You can switch it up. Mm -hmm. You see that? Looks good. I'm planning on just probably eating half of it for lunch. <laughs> Here, you want some? Sure. All right. Mm. That's really good. And I'm not a vegetable lover, and this is super good. <laughs> I have been training myself, guys. It's been good for you. Yeah, good for me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you don't like this combo of vegetables. That's so good. You could you can try something else. Like the vegetables are so soft that I can't even tell they're in there. And they have a little nutty flavor because they've been roasted in the oven. Super good. So. Thank you so much, Susan, for so today. Welcome. I'm looking forward to sharing more recipes with you guys. Yep. Yeah. She'll, She'll be fun. back next week. And be sure to check throughout the week. We have other little things that she's going to be sharing with us. So we're excited about it. And we hope you are too. <laughs>